Today, our talk is on seasonal allergies, but a little different twist. What is the relationship between microbiome probiotics and your seasonal allergies? Firstly, let's talk about what is an allergy, especially to these pollens. An allergy is something where the immune system is looking, if it needs to, to attack something. If you imagine maybe a video you've seen, or if you imagine you had a big giant warehouse, and in that warehouse at night, you just put German shepherds out there inside, it was very comfortable, and they would monitor what's going on. As long as things were peaceful, quiet, no noise, they would enjoy themselves and probably sleep most of the night. But if a rock went through the window, an alarm went off, somebody broke through the door, all of a sudden these German shepherds are going to be very aggressive. So that's what your immune system's wanting to do if it senses an alarm. Most of us have had COVID, and certainly, if not that, some infection. So as the immune system attacks that infection, the reason is because if it doesn't kill the infection, we probably could die. We'd be overrun by the pathogen. But guess what? The immune system got confused a long time ago, and it decided that pollen was an invader. And it isn't. A pollen's not a pathogen. It's an irritant. But many people don't have problems with seasonal allergies, like myself. I've never had an issue at all. I think I feel a little bit fatigued during the couple weeks, but I don't have any symptoms other than that. So I, really, when you boil down what is the, the cause of seasonal allergies, it is an overreactive, confused immune system. That's what it is. And so what happens is these cells called a mast cell uh, starts... Uh, producing histamine. I think most of us know about what a histamine actually causes us to feel like. The scratchy eyes, the runny nose, the cough, the continual drainage, even down to uh, anxiousness sometimes and stomach aches and headaches. Those things are pervasive because what's happening is the wisdom of the body is doing what it thinks it needs to do, which is create a lot of mucus and fluids to wash out the enemy. It's actually not trying to kill it, it's trying to wash it out. And how aggravating that can be day after day, week after week. Well, we can take prescription antihistamines, we can take over-the-counter antihistamines. The problem, as our pharmacist, Dr. Deering, has spoke many times on my radio show, Vital Health Radio, uh, the evidence is starting to look a little cloudy as far as the long-term effects. And one of those is the lowering of cognitive abilities. You know, I didn't think about that at 30 years old. I got plenty of brain cells. I don't worry. But it, there's a point where you start aging, you start getting a little bit, you start sensing that things aren't quite running on all cylinders, that you want to do all you can to preserve what you have. Well, these antihistamines have been shown now from the Benadryls down the list to definitely lower cognitive ability. You know, one or two days will not make a difference, but how many people do this for months and months on end? So I have about three really good steps here to help you manage your problem with seasonal allergies. One is, we talked about the word histamine, got to stop or at least reduce histamine in foods. Doesn't that make sense? You already are producing a lot of these, and then you want to add more into it? It makes no sense at all. And so what are some of the foods? You know, I did a video a long time ago that was very, very popular on rating the alcohols that we drink from good to worst. And the two that are absolutely produce the high levels of histamine and the most unhealthy on many levels is beer and wine. Wine is a complete myth that it's a healthy drink. It is not. It's socially acceptable. That's why people drink it. Uh, you can go to uh, YouTube. They'll, uh, we'll put a link on here for that video for the alcohol if you want to uh, view that. But I'll give you the little bullet point. Tequila, mixed correctly, water, lemon, and shaken, is the only alcohol that does not produce uh, increased blood sugar, doesn't have any histamines, the lowest level of glyphosate, it doesn't have moldy things in it, and it has the best ability for the body to detox it. No alcohol is a health food, but this is the least dangerous. Please give up beer and wine for other reasons, even if you don't have histamine. 
Well, some other foods, spinach. I didn't really realize that until I looked into it. Uh, avocados, uh, cultured foods. Hey, I love the value of cultured foods from kefir to sauerkraut to kombucha. Those are wonderfully nutritious, clean foods. But if you're going through the seasonal allergy nightmare, don't eat these foods. You're just adding to the problem. Uh, so that's number one. But number, the biggest thing is how do we look into why is the immune system confused? Why is it looking at a true friend and looking at it as a foe? The gut microbiome is what produces the biggest significant part of our immune system. And when we have many different health conditions related to the gut mi microbiome and the intestinal lining, like leaky gut, the immune system is compromised. We did not have a history of seasonal allergies in the history books as we are experiencing now. So what is leaky gut? Leaky gut is where we have taken in substances that actually have made the gut more fle flexible, so there's bigger holes in it. There's bigger gaps that should not be there. The gut lining is at is so perfectly made to allow a single molecule of food, nutrient, to pass through it one single at a time. But when we ingest chlorine, alcohols in excess, we uh, take antibiotics, the biggest offender of all. We do drugs of any kind, painkillers, many of the steroids, the water that we drink with other chemicals, these produce a very toxic environment for a moment with this gut. You do it all day long, you're going to have a gut that basically has leaky gut. There are ways to diagnose it that are not exact diagnosis, but they can tell you enough information that you can define that you do have it. Well, what happens when you do that is the food molecules that should go through as single molecules go through as clumps, big clumps. Those then are circulated throughout the system in places they shouldn't be. And the immune system starts looking at that big chunk of many different molecules as a enemy. It starts wanting to attack it. And part of that is histamine. And the other part is autoimmune. The other part is inflammatory factors. All of these things, we can take pills from the green pharmacy. My my life. We can take pills from the pharmaceutical industry. None of those are addressing the real root cause, which is the gut lining and leaky gut. So what do we do about that? Well, firstly, we need to understand that many of the chemicals and things that we ingest will, will cause this harm, and we need to basically clean up our lives. Nothing wrong with taking a pain pill when you have a rough day. Nothing wrong with having a, you know, a social drink. But doing these things on and on is going to create a confused immune system. Confused immune systems make us sicker and then increase things like these allergies to pollen and other allergies. So cleaning up your, your lifestyle with uh, not eating seed oils. I pre preach that all the time. That's canola, uh, all the vegetable oils, sunflower seed oils. That is a horrendous ingredient called linoleic acid is what's damaging and causing, again, car cognitive decline and cardiovascular increase. Won't hear that from the American Heart Association because they still believe that vegetable oils are super healthy. It'll be another 10 years. They'll come around just like they have on. It takes a decade to come around to common sense. So what would I do if I was talking to a friend, a relative, or even a client about how do we really negotiate the, the more of the cure, more of the rebalancing so that I don't have to deal with this? Well, one is, again, eliminating some of those foods. That's not going to be the kingpin of this whole plan, but it's part of what we need to consider. Two is, I believe that we need to help that leaky gut by again, cleaning up the life, but there's a product uh, called Gut Support Ion. Dr. Zach Bush, if you just YouTube Dr. Zach Bush and put gut ion or humic soil, this man is amazingly um, intelligent and way ahead of his time that explains one teaspoon of this, within five minutes, these loose junctions become what we call tight junctions within the gut. It's not permanently fixing anything, but it's stopping those big molecules from going through. 
one teaspoon twice a day. It lasts about six to eight hours every time you do it. Then when you eat, you're not depositing these huge, uh, more allergic substances throughout the body. And it takes maybe three months to rid yourself of the ones that have accumulated. And it's an easy thing, not refrigerated, you carry it with you, you leave it in the car. So doing that with a probiotic of your choice, some of that's experimental. My two favorites at this point are Vital Flora and Ancient Nutrition. These two are, agree with me. Not all probiotics do. We've got to find one that does. And I really feel that we need to rebuild what we call the microbiome. The microbiome is the massive quantities of good bacteria. The problem is most microbiomes are negative bacteria or neutral bacteria. And that is a recipe for poor health, poor mental states, poor allergies. Uh, you name it, it's going to contribute to a uh, worse outcome. A microbiome is like having a big family. And if you have a big family of uh, felons and drug addicts, it would be far different than a family of disciplined, family-oriented, healthy people that are supporting you. So we want the, the, the best that we can get along this ride called life. And so I don't really like people to take probiotics unless they have addressed some of the leaky gut because those probiotics shouldn't actually go through that hole either. So I want people to consider that. Okay, we've done that. That's not going to fix you overnight. We're talking about that's a longer term process. But right now I'm dying. I have all this sneezing. I have this congestion. I feel awful. What do I do? Well, there's a thing called a mast cell. That's what is interacting with these antibodies to cause this, this, this mucus and fluid. And the reason a body, again, is doing it is just the same reason you washed your car last week because it had pollen on it. Try, it's trying to wash it out. Well, it can't because it just keeps reacting in there. So what do we do about that? Quercetin is an amazing antihistamine that does not cause cognitive decline, does not cause you to be sleepy, and it actually comes from onions. So on foods, eat a lot of onions, not caramelized onions, but regular onions. You can cook them, just not the caramelizing of them. And do that more than the label says. Double the label and do it in divided doses during the day. Once you have a major flare-up, it's not going to completely eliminate it, but it can be very, very helpful. Secondly, there's an enzyme called DAO. And anything I say, just go to AI and type it in. You'll see the verification for the, the facts that I'm giving you. DAO is in the intestines. It is a special enzyme that's there. Guess why? To digest histamines. Betcha that most of us as Americans have a lack of DAO. You take one pill twice a day and you're giving your body back probably what I have plenty of because I don't have any of these allergies. And it's an interesting compound because you'll know in two days whether you are a candidate for that. If you're not, you just done an experiment and we got to keep on doing other things. But it's really cool. It's safe for everybody because all you're doing is replacing uh, what your body should have. Next, stinging nettles is the other side of this coin. Quercetin is helping to uh, work with the, the, uh, the histamine release mast cells, but stinging nettles helps to prevent it to even start producing the histamine. So you've got one that helps once you have the histamine, you have one that helps you to reduce even the production of it. And that stinging nettles is one of the main herbs for that. All these need to be taken twice a day. All of these need to make sure that you are doing it in the evening because on my research, did not realize this, made no common sense. The majority of your pollen is in the morning until noon. I have to term, I really common sense thought it'd be in the afternoon. It's not. It's from five in the morning to 11. And so we got to have all this in us before you ever step outside that door of your house. And again, maintenance is dosing is what's on bottles. We are talking therapeutic dosing. That's a totally different question. So I always find that doubling it, it tends to be where the therapeutic window of opportunity is. Again, if you have super medical issues, you're taking a lot of drugs, consult with a uh, experienced uh, health professional before interacting with all of that. And then lastly, you know, we sell a local honey that has has small amounts of pollen in it. I'm not a big fan of you doing this the 
right in the midst of your uh, side of your side effects of the allergies, but to help prime and kind of teach the immune system to not recognize enemies, you can do a small amount of local honey or local pollen even at that point. But generally that's better before the season hits, but sometimes even during the season, the small amount in honey, like the one we offer at Nutrition World, can be a really nice little game changer. So there's a plan. Let's work on leaky gut. Let's put the good probiotics back in. Let's work on things that create less histamines. Let's work on an enzyme that digests it. And let's also do something to help re uh, reduce the amount of the production of the histamine. And that's a game plan for your seasonal allergies from the Green Pharmacy. Thank you so much.